live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Pure Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. We're at Pier 70, one of the oldest piers in San Francisco, which is not long for this place. It's going to be torn down after Pure Accelerate. I'm Dave Vellante, and this is Stu Miniman, my co-host. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Kent Petzold is here. He's the Enterprise Storage Manager at Intermountain Healthcare, and Vic Nagy is back. He's the CTO of Healthcare for Pure Storage. Gents, welcome to theCUBE. Good to have you. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. So, Kent, let's start with, uh, with you, because we talked to Vic a little bit already, but uh, Tell us a little bit about Intermountain and your role. So Intermountain is a, the biggest healthcare provider in Utah. We've got 22 hospitals, 185 clinics. Uh, my role there is I manage the storage team. We've got uh, eight petabytes of usable storage that we manage. Uh, do lots and lots of backups. Uh, all things data protection is, is under my purview as well. Now, have you always been a healthcare you know, practitioner or is this relatively new for you? Or? Um, I've been at Intermountain for 24 years. Okay, so that's, <laughs> that's enough to, to qualify you as knowing a little bit about, about yes. healthcare. And so, but my question is, relative to sort of other industries, what's unique about healthcare? I mean, obviously it's highly regulated, you got you know, serious privacy, but you're dealing with, you know, many businesses are dealing with dollars and cents. You deal with a lot of budget, but you also deal with lies. Talk about some of the differences of healthcare and the particu particular stresses that it puts on IT. Um, one, one of the big things is just doing updates of your technology uh, because we deal with people's lives. Um, we have to be careful about when we do updates. You know, we got to be cognizant of, you know, is the emergency room full, things like that. So it, it puts an extra challenge on us to for when we need to take systems down to do updates. So that means, yeah, because updates means downtime. Usually, yeah, uh, in the past, yes. Oh, that's not the case with Pure? <laughs> oh, tell us about that, Vic. Okay, so, so maybe, actually tell us about that a little bit. So you guys make a big deal out of it. Last segment I turned it into dollars and cents because on average a migration, a ray migration, is minimum $50,000, minimum. Um, in healthcare, yeah, I mean, lives. in healthcare, it's, it's it's definitely lives, but it's also a little bit more expensive because this is uh, this is specialty data. So the minimum you're looking at is about a thousand dollars per uh, per gigabyte. Uh, per gigabyte. Per gigabyte transitioned over, depending on the kind of application you're dealing with. Um, in this particular case, you know, it's more than just the expenses, like you mentioned. You know, it's uh, interruption of care, interruption of service, which is not acceptable. Uh, so the technology that we have and the architecture that we have. Uh, allows us to go into healthcare organizations such as Intermountain and say, you know what, you're going to have an environment that's going to get better with time because we're going to be able to come in and not only upgrade your software, we're also going to be able to come in and upgrade your, your hardware and keep you on the talk cycle every three years, update your controllers and so on and so forth with zero downtime. And what we're seeing is this big shift in the healthcare industry where, you know, can, 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 uh, can relate to this. Like, typically we, we have these updates all teed up and lined up for three o'clock in the morning on some obscure weekend day, right? Uh, where if something goes sideways, you know, the number of experts you can reach are very, very low. Uh, and now we're seeing a switch with this kind of technology to actually have people say, you know what? Two o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday, I'm there, I'm doing it. Okay, so Ken, take us through sort of your journey here and how you sort of, can give us the before and after of pure, what problem you're trying to solve and so, solve that problem. Yeah, so, uh, we, we started down that uh, with our insurance arm, Select Health. They, we were getting calls pretty much every week, sometimes two and three times a week for slow issues. And you know, we're, we're looking through logs, we're, we're doing our monitoring and stuff, and it just, it was continuing. And you know, my architect was spending hours and hours every week Fun. trying to research this. So we started looking at flash vendors Pure was one of the only ones that came in, gave us the documentation we wanted, was able to answer the questions we had about our environment. It was a Sybase database, AIX, with some kind of weird settings. And uh, we started testing it. We liked what we saw. We kept, we moved along, finally put it into production. They haven't called us about slows since we put it in production over three years ago. 
this was three years ago. So, yeah. it, so it was really a performance issue you were having with your traditional apps. And yeah. you, you're saying you dropped in Pure Flash Array and the we, problems just yeah, disappeared. We haven't had any calls about slows since then. And have you had to sort of increase your capacity of the Pure? We've system? increased the capacity. In fact, because our three years was up, we just did a, a head swap on them and added a little more capacity and that went flawless, no outage for the business, and they were very happy about that. So as a, a long-time storage practitioner, what's the difference in terms of, you know, what difference does it make to you when you bring in a system like this? Um, some of the older systems to, to like do the head swap and get the new controller is weeks and weeks of planning and making sure you understand what's on there, what needs to move, what can take down times, what can't. I mean, there's a lot of planning that goes into that when you know there's going to be a disruption. So, you know, with systems like Pure, we don't have to do as much planning. We still do a little bit to, to, so that we know what we're what we're getting ourselves into and what's going to be at risk. But it's it's a lot less. It's, there's no. So, Ken, how how are you tracked by the business? What are kind of do you have any measurements or KPIs that they look to you? We talked about uptime before, but you know, kind of to, how you tracked and how how's that changed in say the last you know few years? Um, it's changed quite a bit because we you know we're not having to track, uh, especially in our tier one apps that are on peer, we're not having to track the performance as much. So we're able to relook at what our KPIs are and and come up with ones that are that are meaningful for us and. And really, with the simplicity of it, it, it kind of helps us to become more of a trusted advisor to our business and be able to help them solve their problems instead of continually pulling knobs and fighting fires. Yeah, Vic, Vic I'm, I'm curious. How, how do you help you know the, the storage administrator today? I remember Pure used to have streaming on its website, you know, certain data points from customers. What, what are you seeing today? What's helping them, you know, <laughs> you know, shift what they're working on, get more done? Uh, with what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And so, just to come back to that and echo the point here, uh, Kent just made is, you know, essentially, we're seeing the successful organizations in healthcare and possibly other verticals too that live and breathe healthcare, right? So, healthcare, uh, IT organizations that are able to make the transition to a trusted advisor, to a partner, to the business, are really making those leaps ahead uh, in terms of better patient care and outcomes, and also cost mitigation. Now, in terms of what we offer, right, so it's the simplicity that's at the heart of everything. Once you set it up and, and, and you basically, it's like Rod Peel used to say, you set it and forget it, right? You have that experience. Uh, and then it's not so much about having practitioners say, there's black magic going on and we're going to trust it. We have to build the transparency in there. We have to demonstrate that at, an, at a glance, single pane, there's answers to all of the questions and more that they might have. Right? The telemetry that we're getting off of these systems allows us to do things with machine learning and AI and a lot of business intelligence at the back end to be able to say, you know, hey, over 80 some percent of all of our problem tickets that are ever open are opened by Pure on behalf of our customers. And say, hey, you have something that's demonstrating a characteristic that is similar to what we've seen across the world uh, somewhere else and you might run into a problem, so let's just go resolve it. So can, one of the things we've been poking at and they talked about in the keynote this morning is how do you get more value out of your data? Uh, we talked about it in an earlier se segment with Vic. How, how do you look at your data? How are you sharing with you know, other organizations who are leveraging data internally better? Um, we've, got, <laughs> we've got quite a bit of data and we're starting to go down the genomics road and, and uh, with that data we've got um, some good opportunities to be able to make some good advancements in healthcare and how things are, different diseases are treated. So we're kind of excited about that and that's one of the areas my team's been really helping out and being a trusted advisor to our genomics group to get them set up with things they need. You guys were talking on stage today about how backup and data protection is changing. It used to be kind of disk to disk to, to disk and then sort of flash to disk to, to tape. Uh, well, tape is still somewhere in there, you know, whatever, maybe it's the fourth <laughs> level. You guys are talking flash to flash to cloud. Uh, we were talking off camera, Kent, you said, we're kind of looking at where to put the right cloud workloads. Is, is backup one of those? Or? Backup is possibly one of those. We've talked a lot about um, 
you know, how we offsite. Right now we still use a lot of tape. Um, one of our key things that we think about when we're, when we're thinking about cloud and like offsiting stuff, so we want to make sure we put it somewhere that if we have a disaster, we can spin it up in that place. We're not trying to bring it back and you know, bring it somewhere that is impossible during a disaster. So we, we want to put it somewhere and we want to be, be able to use it there and not just have it sit there and say, yeah, we've got, we've got data protection, it's right there, but we can't use it. Yeah, yeah, I can't recover. But I mean, tape is still pretty prevalent in healthcare, right? It's a, yeah. it's very, a compliance very issue, so. right? I mean, the auditors aren't going to let it, you just throw away tape. Uh, yes and no. I think it's just more of the, you know, it's worked for so many years, right? Now, the problem that we run into is with the things, and we touched a little bit on this in the, in the last segment, you know, we talked about, we talked about security, right? And sort of in, in terms of uh, insurance and protection against any of these threats that are malware, et cetera, that are coming up, is getting more and more important for folks like Kent to prove to the business that, hey, we're not only backing this data up, but we're restoring it. We can restore it, and it's good, right? And we know how long this takes. So all, all your ITIL stuff comes into play, you have your SLOs, it's all back on. Um, try doing that with tape, right? Try doing that with tape that's been archived off site. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just, <laughs> no, so this yeah. is why healthcare is actually moving in the direction of saying, you know what? Let's just, let's just forget about that. Let's try to find different, better, faster, cheaper media if we can actually apply all of the principles from, from today yeah, to do that. So you might still have tape, but you just never use it. Or you pray you never use it, just to have it there, just, just in case. Yeah. Uh, um, it's like that fire extinguisher in your barn that you don't know if it works or not, but you, you have it there. It's there, it's good, it looks <laughs> good, right? <laughs> you gotta read that. Okay, and so if you think about the experience that you've had with, with Pure. I told you I was going to put you in the spot. So <laughs> are there things that you would do differently if you had to do it over again? Advice for your peers? Uh, things that are on Pure's to-do list that you'd like them to do that make your life easier? I mean, yeah, there's there's things that are on their to-do list. I mean, we're and I think they're announcing some of those today, so that's probably pretty good. But, okay. you know, we, we want to do more with replication. Obviously, as a data protection, you, you need that. Um, We'd, we'd like the price point of the M's to go down a little bit because <laughs> there's there's kind of this misnomer about you know tier one storage and do I put my dev on tier one? Well, there's huge opportunities with cloning and things like that and some of the partners that Peer has that we can actually bring up dev environments and not use as much storage as what we're using today. So, so that's a data sharing capability yeah. that you can give access to the current data to your devs and not have to spin up multiple copies right. and separate infrastructure. And the use case that we talked about before was an, it was an enterprise data warehouse, right, that you were trying to speed up. Yeah. How about this, you know, you heard from Scott Dietzen this morning, the big push on analytics. Is that something, I mean, certainly your industry is pushing in, is your organization there yet? Are you dip your toe into the big data lake we, yet? Yeah, they, we've been doing analytics for a long time um, in one way or another, and it's just, we're just getting more and more pressure to have the data available so they can continue to do that. And Are you throwing pure at that problem, or is uh, um, we hope you know we hope time. to Good. over time we we keep adding them to our environment. And All right, Vic, we'll give you the last word. Pure and healthcare. What, uh, what's yeah, the before sticker? before you give me the last word, I mean, I think Kent's underselling what Intermountain's <laughs> been doing in, in terms yeah, of well, analytics we'll some color over time, to, right? So basically, it. they have been uh, one of the pioneers in terms of really understanding driving value from data, right? Really? And it's okay. been, yes, it's been over time, right? It's been very much so of, I have this old data, I want to go run analytics on it, then I want to do some BI on it, and now we're getting to the real time, near real time uh, uh, insight on data that really matters, right? And for that, we're hopeful uh, and, and that, it, that we're going to have an opportunity to actually participate and help build out those sorts of frameworks. And Intermountain's one of the organizations that's led the way, a lot of the other organizations sort of following in the same footsteps. Um, and you know, Right at the end, all I'd say is, you know, all of the benefits that we've talked about, and we talked about, we talked about across uh, verticals and just horizontally in general that the, the Evergreen model brings to, to bear uh, from Pure, I think they're really heightened in terms of healthcare, right? So we talked about uptime, right? We talked about six nines of uptime across our arrays. That, that, and we're counting planned uh, maintenance as part of your runtime. We're not saying exclude those, right? Very important, right? No data migrations. The downtime Super, is downtime. Downtime is downtime, right? <laughs> exactly, thank you, right? Uh, the the uh, you know, data migrations are super risky, right? Not only are they expensive, but they're risky, 
Right. Uh, if you talk to any CMIO or CM, CNIO, and you say, hey, what do you, how do you feel about your data being picked up from here, put over there, right? Just see their reaction, right? right. And, and, and they're expensive, they're also you know, expensive. Uh, and then the simplicity aspect of it. Simplicity is sort of at the function of the heart of everything. It's power through simplicity, really, is what it is. Uh, giving uh, him and his team and his organization time back to be able to go back and say, okay, to the business, how can we make your life better? How can we make patient care better? And how can we improve on resources? All right, good. Actually, Ken, we're going to give you the last word. Uh, Pure Accelerate 2017. Good events, what are you learning? Anything exciting? Uh, it's been a great event so far. I love the announcements. Um, I, I just love being in this type of environment because there's such a vibe here of wanting to help people do things and, and uh, it, it's, it's really great to be in a place like this. Yeah, it's fun too. We got Snoop and uh, Snoop with the multi-cloud. That's, uh, that's yeah, a good multi -cloud. Are you inside joke, are you, around? are you sticking around for that tomorrow? Yeah, yeah I'll be around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, we'll leave it there. Thanks you guys, we really All appreciate right, you coming you. on. Okay, keep it right there. This is theCUBE, we're live from Pure Accelerate 2017 in San Francisco. We'll be right back.